Now you're done now. Toast. <laughs> the tiny wins. Ah. Hey, man, I gave you that. Come on, one more. Come on. This movie is based on a nonfiction book, but what lengths did you go to to ensure that it was based in reality when it came to the characters in the community? The movie itself is a work of fiction. Um, and, uh, you know, Sterling Harjo, my co-writer and myself, you know, we both are from native communities where Resval is prevalent. So, you know, as we were talking and sharing our own specific experience, in my case, I played basketball. Um, I played Resval. I was not very good, but I played. I was able to draw a lot of my experience playing high school sports. He was able to draw a lot of uh, from his experiences playing uh, high school sports. And we found there were these sort of parallels and these sort of constants in, in both of those worlds. And, and that was kind of the, the, the jumping off point and, and the foundation for, for us. We've been seeing more and more indigenous films appear at TIFF. Um, where do you think, when it comes to the caliber of talent, the, the work that's coming out, where do you think that stands in comparison to the opportunities that are being offered? There's definitely uh, this beautiful emergence of more of that. I, I'm just really grateful to be a part of that because I definitely began when there wasn't as many. With all the Indigenous films that are at TIFF, seeing a lot of people that started off around the time I did, if not uh, earlier on as well, and to see um, the, get the exposure that they're getting, you know, I'm just, I'm really grateful to be along for the ride and to experience the evolution of this in cinema. Kachani, I was surprised to hear that this is your first time acting in a film. So at what point did it really sink in that not only are you acting in this film, but you're starring in it? Even right now, staring at that poster um, and like just looking at it and talking to you is just like everything, like the whole process is just, it's ridiculous. Even last night after the showing, um, you know, there was a point when everyone was up on stage and, you know, everyone stood up over a thousand people and gave us a standing ovation. Um, and in that moment, just taking a couple of deep breaths and really just trying to soak it all in and understand this is a once in a lifetime experience. You're obviously dealing with some tough, tough topics in this film, but throughout it, there's so much hope and there's so much joy. So how important was it to have that balance? We were just telling a story and uh, about our lived experiences. And that is, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of not good. What's the expression? I laugh so I don't cry. You know, that's one thing that traditionally hasn't been portrayed on screen with indigenous communities they are very serious and, and stoic and, and, you know, but Native communities are some of the most hilarious places I've been, you know. Um, and so we wanted to show all of that, you know, all of that sort of diversity within the experience and just be as honest with our storytelling as we could be. What do you hope audiences walk away feeling and thinking about this film? I'm just hoping that it provides more insight into, you know, some of the really um, real issues that a lot of our indigenous communities across Turtle Island go through. I hope that creates more understanding and compassion of why we also have, you know, issues a, a lot in like in Canada with missing and murdered indigenous women. And, you know, they're all intricately connected and woven into each other. We are, we're healing, we're healing. And we're in that next generation that's going to help the next generation heal too. And I'm just grateful to be a part of um, a project that also kind of reflects a mirror back on society of that.